morning. We're back with example four. Uh, instead of being asked to find the mean and the median, now we're asked to find all sorts of measures of spread. So we want the sample standard deviation, sample variance, the spread, the range. Anytime I ask you to get me some statistics, use technology. All right, we've got it at our disposal, so let's use it. And when I'm asking you for stats, the, the quickest button, uh, the quickest function on your calculator is to just do one bar stats. So if we remember, we'll hit stat, we'll go to the right to the calc drop down menu. You can either hit one or enter here. I think previously I hit enter, so I'm going to change it up a little, get a little crazy, and I'll hit the number one key. It still goes to that same calculator screen. So let's feed your calculator L1, hit enter, and here we are again. We have our sample mean, we have the summation of all of the values of our variable. We have the summation of all the squares of the value of our variable. And here's SX, right? So 52.334. And you have S and sigma, so you have the sample standard deviation and the population standard deviation. But I just want to be clear, do not use this line. This is a number that your calculator is crunching that doesn't doesn't um, play a role in this class, all right? We use it for something else. I just want you to ignore that it's there and always use SX. There will be, I think, one exception to this coming up in chapter four. Um, there will be one time you use the sigma line, but that will only be when S is blank. So in general, we're only using SX is 52.334, where I rounded here to 52.33 web page visits or 52.33 number of class web page access times. Put something in there with context for your units. In order to find the variance, keep in mind the relationship between variance and standard deviation. Variance is the square of standard deviation, or you could say standard deviation is the square root of variance. But I think probably the quickest way to crunch this number is just to take your standard deviation and square it. Now here's your squared key. Right, it's to the left of your comma key, or you could say it's over your log button. And I'm just going to ask my calculator to cal uh, crunch that number. And there is my variance. So you see me writing 2738.43. I rounded. Technically, the units on this are web page visits squared, but that those units just don't make sense in the real world. So I, I don't write them because ultimately we, we are only finding variance to get to standard deviation. So this is the real number that we want. Um, now there's a different way, if you want, to get your variance. So let me show you this other option. I'm going to clear this out so we have a new calculation screen. So this time, let's go ahead and hit second in stat. We're going to call up our list menu. So if I hit second in stat, you'll see there's a whole bunch of things you can do with your lists. You can call them by name if you want. I usually don't use this drop down menu because it's just faster for me to hit second one, second two. Um, but this is a different uh, option for you. There's some operations in here. All right, so we can sort ascending, sort descending. You've seen that before. It can tell you the dimensions. It can do a, a few things. And, and you'll see this, this down arrow key. So there's still some options. Oops, it's lagging a bit. There we go. And we're going to use none of these. So I don't want you to worry about that. What I want us to go over to is the math drop-down menu. And this you have an option to use. So you could find the minimum value in your list, the maximum, the mean, the median. And keep in mind, these first four, they all come together from one bar stats. That's why I use one bar stats so much, because it just gives me all of this information at once. And if you scroll down a little, if we go past sum and product, you start to see option seven. Do we see standard deviation? Okay, we'll, we'll come back to that, because I want us to look at this down arrow key. Your calculator is trying to say, hey, there's still some more functions below the number seven. So let me scroll down there. And when I hit this down arrow key, I can see option eight pop up. There's variance. And since the down arrow key is gone, right, now I have an up arrow key. I know I'm at the bottom of this, this menu. So here's where I could find my variance. So if I hit second stat, go to the math drop down menu, hit option eight. I can find the variance in L1, and there we go, 2738.81. And there's a slight round off error, right? You see I had 43 when I did it um, from my calculation screen. I had 81 as the decimal when I did the actual variance function. This is more accurate, right? I had a round off here. I did 52.333 or 52.33 
excuse me, for the standard deviation, and you can see there are a lot of decimals there. So this is more accurate um, in terms of the variance. It's not a big deal one way or the other. I just want to make sure I mention the discrepancy between crunching the number this way and crunching the number on your calculator. The round off error led to it. Um, here's the other way to get standard deviation. So if I go over to second stat and you see option seven, and again, I'm not going to scroll down and hit enter. I'm just going to hit seven. I can tell my calculator, can you please get me the standard deviation for the data set in L1? There's that number again. So the functions, oops, let me hit there. The functions over in this math menu, most of them are in one var stats. So one var stats is great in that it gives all sorts of information to you at once. Um, the last thing I was asked for was the spread and the range. Can I would get that from the min and max of one var stats? So we've got my spread, two numbers, and my range, one number, and they all have units hanging out on them. Okay, so all of these statistics are measures of spread. So in that SOX acronym, that second S, your SOX, you've got four of them right here, standard deviation, variance, spread, and range. You only have to quote me one when it comes to your midterm. I don't need all four, all right, just give me one. I tend to stick with the range or the standard deviation, but you just need to give me one. All right, thanks gang, bye. So we've seen now how to get all of these statistics on our calculator. I just want us to kind of zoom out, take a, take a step back and look at what we've done. So we found the sample standard deviation. You see the number I got right from one of our stats and here are my units. Uh, web page access times, I believe uh, when we first looked at example four, our units were times website was accessed. This is an alternate version of the units. They're both correct, I just wanted you to see a different version of it. Um, if we look at the variance, all right, if I scooch this up and we take a look at the, the sample variance here, you see the, the symbol is S squared, and you see technically the units are web page access times squared. It's just whenever it comes to variances, the units don't make sense, so we tend to not write them because ultimately they aren't important. The only reason we have sample variance was so that we could get to sample standard deviation. So again, going back to that original way that we crunched standard deviation, when we just averaged the deviations, they always added up to zero. So we had to square everything, make it positive. And, and that's why sample variance exists. Uh, you don't usually run into this too much unless you find uh, an older teacher who isn't um, as into technology. I, I've had a couple of those professors before where they do want you to crunch everything by hand. That was the only time I actually had to crunch sample variance. At this point in, in my stats career, I'm always just using technology to crunch the sample standard deviation, so I don't need to crunch sample variance. But I do want you to know the relationship between those two, because when you decide to major in stats, uh, variance will come back up again. But it, just for Math 43 cases, we don't need to worry too much about variance, only knowing that the relationship between standard deviation and variance is variance is the square of standard deviation, or you could say standard deviation is the square root of variance. Whichever version of that you want to uh, hold on to, great. And then we have, like always, our spread and our range. And I've said a few times I'm a bigger fan of range. One number to write down instead of two numbers. Um, saves me a lot of time. I can play that much more Candy Crush. Uh, and I, I have this little note here. All of these statistics are measures of spread. So when it comes to your socks, and we're talking about that second S, you could quote me the standard deviation, the variance, the spread, or the range. I don't care which one you do. I typically stick with standard deviation or range. Those are the two most popular, and we get them from one bar stats.